Welcome to the immune and lymphatic system part one of three. Immune system and lymphatic system helps us fight away all of these guys that are trying to get us. So why do we need an immune system? Our bodies need to be able to defend from attacks from outside substances. Um, animals are a tasty nutrient and a vitamin-packed vitamin meal uh, for different pathogens or different uh, things that can cause us harm. Animals must defend themselves against invaders, whether it be viruses, bacteria, or fungus. Um, it also can be attacked from the inside, uh, meaning we got to defend against abnormal body cells such as cancers, or we'll also attack um, if we get a transplant, so a kidney transplant, a heart transplant, a lung transplant, um, saying it needs to be a match. Well, if it's not a match, if it's just any old kidney or any old lungs, um, our immune system will attack that. That's why we need a match so our bodies can recognize it as our own. Lots of different ways to get into our body, a lot, whether it's the digestive system, get in through the respiratory system, or a cut in your skin. And then after it's inside of the body, you can go through two different ways. Once it's in, it can go through the circulatory system and get around from body part to body part, or it can go through the secondary transport system, the lymphatic system. So lots of ways to get in, or sorry, three ways to get in, and then once they're in, they can go many, many, many different parts of the body, either through the circulatory system or lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is that. It's a secondary transport system. Um, it doesn't have a pump like the circulatory system does, but it still moves fluid around these lymph vessels, these tubes that carry the lymph. Um, as you see, it's got a little stop, stop valve right here to make sure the lymph flows in one direction. Um, so how does the lymph actually move if it's not a pump? Well, <clears throat> maybe you've had a garden hose in your backyard or something like that, and you turn off the water after you used it. Well, if you go and step on that hose, water gets pushed through the hose. The lymphatic system and, and how the lymph moves, the liquid moves through the lymph vessels is very similar to you stepping on that garden hose. What happens is, is, but instead of your foot stomping on it, is when your muscles contract, your muscles are pushing and squishing the lymph vessels together, moving the lymph through the lymphatic system. Lymphatic system also takes care of making and helping mature B cells and T cells that are really going to be important when we talk about it in part two and part three of this video. So this is the overall big picture of the immune system. This is the overall thing. There's three lines of defense. The first line of defense is our barriers, okay, which is our skin and our mucous membranes. Our mucous membranes line our respiratory system and our digestive system, uh, those tracks where we have interactions with the outside world. Think about it, you take a bite of food, that's an interaction with the outside world. You're bringing it into our body. So we have mucous membranes there to help, that's like skin and, and secretion of, of gooey stuff to wrap around all the bad stuff so we don't bring it in. Um, and then obviously our skin is a protection from the outside world as well. So those are barriers that are external from the outside to separate inside from outside. That's the first line of defense. The second line of defense is things on the inside, but still are non-specific. Like this barrier up here, our skin doesn't say, well, I only protect a bit against uh, E. coli, but anthrax, I don't know about that, so I'll let it in. No, your skin defends against all of that stuff. Your second line of defense defends against all of that stuff as well. Um, but they're more like our patrolling soldiers, okay? They're out there, not, they're not looking for anything specific, but if they see something that it doesn't look quite right or it doesn't recognize as itself, they're gonna try to take care of that pathogen. And so these things are the, are 
two of our biggest things for our second line of defense is our natural killer cells and the inflammatory response. We're going to take care of these two things, the first line and the second line here in part one. And then the third line of defense, oh sorry, going back to the first and the second line, both of those things are non, non specific meaning that they help fight against everything. Not just one thing, but they'll help fight against everything. A third line of defense, which we're gonna split up into part two and part three of these videos, that is where things are specific. These are our special forces. We have especially trained cells to take out special exact pathogens. So, let's move on and talk about the first line of defense. Like we said, these are our external defenses. Our first line, it's our, um, as everything goes, it's our mucous membranes in our respiratory tract and our digestive tract. It's also our skin on the outside. And last but not least, it's also sweat secreted from the skin. Our sweat secreted from the skin has a low pH to be able to take care of and hopefully mess up with some of the proteins and the enzymes. Remember that's called denaturing the enzymes. Our sweat has a low pH to hopefully denature some of those uh, proteins of pathogens on our skin to help them not get in. Our second line of defense, again, is still non-specific immunity. It's a general defense. It's our petroleum cells. And it comes down to three different things. The first thing is, is our natural killer cells. Natural killer, okay? Our natural killer cells. Um, NK cells. They destroy virus infected cells and cancer cells. They make the cells, not the virus themselves, okay, and not what's causing anything to, bad to happen, but the infected cells and the cancer cells. They're infecting the, they're telling the cells to go through this process called apoptosis. Apoptosis is defined as programmed cell death. Okay, so it's basically saying the cells, hey, you need to break apart and we'll reuse the parts later, but you, as you're working right now, it's not going to work for us. You're infected. Let's get rid of you, break you down, and reuse the parts. Then we have a complement system, which is a whole bunch of antimicrobial proteins. And what these proteins will go through, go through and do, if it recognizes something as a pathogen, something bad, what it'll do is the antimicrobial proteins will come and make a pore, which is a fancy scientific term for a hole, in the plasma membrane of that particular individual, or I should say cell. Again, causing apoptosis or a form of apoptosis. Last but not least is we have the inflammatory response. The inflammatory response does a few things, but basically what I want you to think of is increase the heat. And when we increase the heat, proteins and enzymes become denatured. And hopefully the enzymes of the pathogen won't be able to take it and do become denatured uh, due to the heat. And we can beat them that way. So here's just a picture of what happens with our natural killer cells. It causes our cell lysis, which again is a fancy word for breaking up, which is apoptosis, programmed cell death. Here's our antimicrobial proteins. Again, it puts the proteins in that plasma membrane um, and causes a hole in it, again causing apoptosis and lysis of the cell. And again, our inflammatory response causes a lot of different things. Um, it causes our capillaries to dilate and a whole bunch of these white blood cells, red blood cells, platelets, clotting factors to help fight the pathogens. That's the biggest thing, to help flight, fight the pathogens. And then as I alluded to before, the biggest part is denature the proteins and the enzymes of the pathogen. And that is the first and second line of defense. It's like this and like that and like this and a It's like that and like this and like that and a It's like this So just chill to the next episode